Hi, I'm Rod Miller, and you're watching Astro Brief. This is brief number one for Friday, November 12th, 2021. Meteor showers, a nearly full lunar eclipse, and a big old slice of raspberry pie. Grab your OTA with both hands and hold on tight. Astro Brief starts now. Okay, let's start with a quick night sky update for this week. Tonight at sunset, Jupiter, Saturn, the Moon, and Venus will form a long, ragged diagonal line in the southern sky. It's probably worth going out just to take a look at that. But also, the northern Taurus meteor shower peaks tonight. The peak will reach a maximum rate of only about 5 meteors per hour tonight, Friday, November 12th. But the larger grain size of the comet's debris can produce some very colorful fireballs. The best viewing time should be about 1 a.m. Coming up Saturday, November 13th, if you look just above the moon for the great square of Pegasus, Vega will be the brightest star high in the west on these cool November evenings. The constellation Lyra extends to its left. Three of Lyra's stars near Vega are interesting doubles. Just above Vega is Epsilon Lyrae, the double double. Epsilon forms one corner of a roughly equilateral triangle with Vega and Zeta Lyrae. Binoculars easily resolve Epsilon, and a good 4 inch or better telescope at 100x should resolve each of Epsilon's components into a tight pair. Zeta is also a double but uh, much tougher for binoculars and easily resolved in a small telescope. Delta Lyrae, to the upper left of Zeta, is a wide and easy binocular pair. Wednesday, November 17th. In the eastern sky, just after dusk on Wednesday night, the nearly full moon will shine 2.6 degrees to the celestial south of Uranus. Wednesday, November 18th, the Leonids meteor shower peaks. Now, the Leonids, Leonids meteor shower is courtesy of material left by passage of Comet 55P, or Temple Tuttle. Up to 15 meteors per hour are predicted at the peak of the shower on Thursday the 18th. The best viewing time for the Leonids should be Thursday morning just before dawn, when the radiant will be high in the eastern sky. Unfortunately, a full moon on the peak night will limit the number of meteors that you'll be able to see. We also have a nearly total lunar eclipse coming up. Friday, November 19th brings the full moon at 3.59 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The moon will be close enough to opposition it'll pass through the Earth's shadow, causing a near total lunar eclipse in the early hours just before dawn. The lunar eclipse will peak about 4 a.m. on the 19th, but it begins around 1 a.m. when the Earth's shadow starts to cover the disk. It should be well worth going out to take a look. Okay, a classic astronomy book review. If you're just getting started in astronomy and you're looking for a good book, I want to recommend Night Watch by Terence Dixon. Oh, I bought this book way back when I was first starting out in astronomy, and it's been a great reference for me. The book is interspersed with humorous and interesting stories and experiences from the author. The one section I found particularly useful was the pronunciation guide for the stars and constellations. The book has pretty much everything you need to get started in stargazing. It's entertaining and it's a very easy read. It'll give you a nice introduction to basic astronomy, it contains practical advice on equipment, and it's filled with great star charts and instructions on how to use them. You'll find yourself coming back to this book as a resource over and over again. Also, if you're just getting started in backyard astronomy, I have a couple of backyard astronomy courses up on Udemy. Check out the links in the show notes below. Raspberry Pi. So, computers are not new to astronomy, and neither is the Raspberry Pi. But for those of you not in the know, let's start with the basics. The Raspberry Pi is a small but powerful single board computer. It runs on 5 volts, has an Ethernet port, two USB 2.0 and two USB 3.0 ports, two HDMI ports, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Uh, the latest version comes with two 4 or 8 gigs of RAM and an SD card slot. 
a powerful quad core processor for about 50 bucks. So why is this of interest to us? Well, it's all about the software. You might have seen the ZWO ASI Air Pro and Plus controllers and the Stellarmate Plus controller, but did you know you can build your own smart scope controller for about $100, half or less than what the cost of these prepackaged units is? So what could you do with one of these controllers? Well, if you've seen the new digital telescopes like the EV Scope and Stellina, these are some amazing pieces of technology. Unfortunately, at three to four thousand dollars, out of the reach of the average budget-minded astro geek. But it is possible to build a complete smart scope controlled from a cell phone or tablet and do live imaging from the comfort of your easy chair. And over the next few episodes, we're going to do exactly that. We'll start with prepping the Raspberry Pi flashing the software onto the SD card and testing the computer. Next we'll get an affordable mount and choose our imaging scope and camera. Our goal? We want to create a complete and capable remote control smart telescope for under a thousand dollars. Are you in? Click subscribe and give us a like and if you want to be notified when the next episode is out click on the little bell icon. Coming up next week we're going to do another quick review of the sky. I'll give you another classic uh, book review. And you'll learn what Raspberry Pi kit I bought and why it was the wrong one. Which one you should get. Clear skies, and we'll see you next week. Tell the world. Tell this to everybody wherever they are. Watch the skies everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the skies.